yeah, the spinal cord will yeah, combine different signals and then transmit to our brain, especially the sensory cortex, you will feel each. Most of the each receptors are GPCR. So we focus on the GPCR, especially the often GPCRs expressed in the dorsal ganglia neurons. So these often GPCRs may be the candidates that immediately is each. Actually, our work, you know, that in the lab, to demonstrate a principle, we have found the molecular mechanism of cholesterol H, for example. We have disease screened antagonist, and uh, we believe that many pharmaceuticals also want to treat this H because it has a big market. So it can also, so this compound, these companies can also target this H receptor to treat this H and we find the antagonist. Even though someone's opinion may contradict yours. Where's my friend Alan? It's all about your perspective. Who are we and what is the nature of this reality? Five, four, three, two, one. Ni hao, everybody, and Jong Chek Kwai La. Happy Mid Autumn Festival. We are in the beautiful Beijing, China. Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. We are at the School of Life Sciences here. We are now going to be talking about the sensory GPCR of itch. We have Tian Jun Zhao joining us on the show. Hello. Hi, Hi Jun. Hi, Alain. Thank you so much for coming on our okay. show. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Very excited for this conversation. For those who don't know Jun's background, he's a graduate researcher in the Li Lab at Peking University School of Life Sciences focused on the sensory GPCR of itch. And you can find all of the links in the bio below. Jun, let's start things off by asking you one of our favorite questions. What are your thoughts on the general direction of our world? Oh, it's an interesting question. Yeah, it, it, yeah it's general. And you know that there are um, more and more technologies for our life, especially it's convenient for our life. Take example, the, yeah, you know that the Alipay you have used it, mm. or the, the WeChat Pay. So I think for the future, these advanced technologies will help us to better life in this planet. And um, I think, um, actually, I'm afraid uh, maybe the AI will replace me yeah, for the future. Yeah, it's probably. And, um, but I think the main difference between the human and the AI is the idea. I think the idea is important. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the AI will replace the smartest people in the world because, yeah, you know that, as I mentioned, um, it can help us to this repeated works. Yeah, the but repetitive tasks. Yeah, yeah. But the creative ones is much harder for it to... It also depends on human. Yeah. 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 And um, yeah. Yeah, it's totally the general direction of now technology augmenting our lives in so many ways, our health, our education, our day-to-day -day processes. Mm -hmm. AI, narrow AI, doing repetitive tasks way better than humans is very quickly happening. But AI doing creative tasks is slow, slower at yeah. happening right now. And the building general intelligence is also mm -hmm. very difficult. How do you get a computer system to recognize space and time is very hard. Um, and But who knows in terms of replacement of, of us as humans or at least augmenting us for sure, mm -hmm. replacing us. We've had that conversation many times on our show. It's, a, it's, a, it's for sure a fun one and we'll see exactly what ends up happening with that. Uh, June, let's talk about your, your journey. Mm -hmm. So, where were you born? How did you pick up your interest in science growing up? Oh, it's a cool question. Actually, I'm interested in biology. I mean, the natural science when, I'm old, when I was a child. Where? Where were you born? Yeah. Which Where? One? Yes. Okay. I was born in Shandong province, Shandong province. Uh, east province of China. And uh, when I was a kid, I'm interested in, for example, why the mosquito will cause us itch. Mm -hmm. So you know that it's, yeah, it's a terrible. Mm -hmm. Especially when we live to, yeah, near the water. Yeah, it's very terrible. So, how to say, 
I'm interested in the, this nature science when I was a child, and when I uh, when I'm and when I was um, undergraduate student in the uh, in my university, the Northwestern Agricultural for, uh, Forest University in Xi'an Province, mm -hmm. the west of China, and uh, because in our university there is no neuroscience lab, mm. so I searched the literature and I found that um, the most to induced teach is very complex. Mm. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, till now we have known that it may be caused by some compounds released from the, our such as the immune cells and then trigger the uh, itch. Yeah. And uh, till now, for me, uh, to me, and more, as more and more research is worse down, the deeper you thinking or the deeper you understanding, the more I want to know why. Hmm. So that's why I'm interested in science. Yes, yes. So when you were a little kid, it was as simple as just, why is a mosquito bite cause me to itch? Mm -hmm. And then that got you when you were in uh, biotechnology at mm -hmm. uh, the Northwest ANF University. Yeah. You kept going into interest in yeah. that. Yeah. Maybe, um, and then you ended up, we'll talk about this move to Peking University and doing neuroscience here. Mm -hmm. but. I'm so interested in even the most fundamental aspects of what you were talking about with the mosquito and the itch. What do you know about why we itch from the mosquito bite? Okay, you mean, your question is whether or why we want to know the mechanism of itch? Yeah, and why even the mechanism of itch from the mosquito happens. Why do we itch? It's like the immune response. Oh, yeah, what, okay, is, yeah. I see, I yeah, see. Yeah. Actually, the itch includes acute itch and chronic itch. The mosquito-induced itch actually is an acute one, and uh, it means that the itch lasts uh, shorter for six weeks. The chronic itch is last over six weeks, especially on the, some systemic disease. Okay, let's back to the acute age. The acute age actually is a protective behavior. It will help us to, to expel uh, ex stimulus such as uh, uh, mosquitoes or some plants, toxic plants. Okay, so it's protective for our uh, survival. Yeah, and uh, as for the mechanism, I think it's very complex. It, dep it includes the immune system, the neuroscience, yeah, the, beh the behavioral, yeah. Sometimes it seems like when I get a mosquito bite that if I itch, it lasts longer than if I don't itch. What do you think about that? Okay, I, you mean that uh, the scratch, the more scratch, the more itch. Yeah. Yeah. More itch equals longer, <laughs> okay. longer mosquito bite. Yeah. I see. Yeah. So detailed mechanism is unknown, mm -hmm. and I think it may be caused by a, a feedback loop. Mm. I mean, the more itch, sorry, the more scratch your skin, the more itch is happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's also interesting learning from you that even something as simple as what we experience with like a mosquito bite has such a complex, both the, this peripheral skin layer, complex here, plus complex with how it triggers our nervous system and our behavior of doing this process of itch, our immune system, all this type of stuff. It's very complex, even something simple like a mosquito bite. Yeah, I see. Actually, as you mentioned, it's a circuit. It's a neural circuit, okay? The stimuli will, yeah, will activate the sensor in our skin. For example, a receptor, the itch, especially the itch receptor. And the signal will transmit to the spinal cord. Yeah, the spinal cord will yeah, combine different signals and then transmit to our brain, especially the sensory cortex, you will feel itch. And, uh, yeah, the upstream is the receptor. I mean, the sensors that are stimulated or activated by the external stimuli. And these receptors mainly expressed in our primary sensory neurons. And these sensory neurons is so-called 
the dorsal root ganglia neurons. Mm -hmm. Not only each, the dorsal root ganglia neurons will, yeah, I mean, will uh, control different somatic sensation, including each, pain, temperature, even the mechanical yeah, sensory. Interesting. Yeah. And this primary sensory neuron will combine these signals and then transfer the internal neurons in the spinal cord and then to your brain. Wow, okay. Do, do, one more time. Dorsal root, root ganglia, ganglia which neuron. neurons. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's located in the basal ganglia? Yeah. Okay, okay. And so this is very more, more limbic structure. The lower brain structure, not higher cortex structure. Lower, lower brain structure. Yeah. So more older structure. Mm -hmm. The immune this Im this response. So, so both mechanical touch, temperature, uh, pain, pain. Yeah. And each itch. Somatosensory. The combination of all of those is oh, sorry. is sorry. in this dorsal root. Yeah, okay, sorry. So dorsal root ganglia, the neurons, it's a heterogeneous, a heterogeneous. And the t prior studies have known that the small diameter neurons will mediate each and the pain. The large diameters will control our, such as the mechanical. Mm. Mm -hmm. As for the uh, temperature, it depends on the expression of different uh, temperature related, uh, such as the ion channels. And as I mentioned, these small diameter neurons will control nearly all of the non exceptions, including pain, itch. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And then how are we learning that the, the dorsal root ganglia, how do we know that that center is responsible for somatosensory? For example? Yeah, how do, how do we know that that area is responsible for the somatosensory? Do we do neural mapping, neural imaging of that center when you, know, when you poke or when you scratch and you see that area have activation? Okay, if I understand correctly, you mean how do we characterize this sensory neuron? For example, the each neuron mm -hmm. indeed controls the each sensation. Mm -hmm. Okay, actually, there are many yeah, technologies can help us do that. For example, the single cell RNA seq. Yeah, we can pick one single neuron and then sequence yeah, their MRA. We will help us to identify which gene is expressed in this neuron, this single neuron. Mm -hmm. If this neuron expressed a well-known each receptor, such as the mosquito each receptor, we have known that. Mm. This neuron could mediate the mosquito-induced itch. By the way, the mosquito-induced itch is mediated by the histamine released by the mast cell. Mm. I mean, the mosquito, the bite of the mosquito, such as maybe some organic acid, acid, or stimulate our immune cells, such as the mast cell, and the mast cell then release histamine, and the histamine. It's a true or proitogen. I mean, the each causing compound. It will activate its receptor, the histamine receptor, especially the H1 receptor and H4 receptor expressed in the small diameter DRG neurons. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, back to this question. If we sequenced the gene expressed in the single neuron, and we found that this neuron expressed the histamine H1 is full receptor. So we have reason to believe this neuron could mediate the histamine induced itch. Yes, okay, yeah. okay. okay. This the single cell RNA-seq is powerful. And so we're doing um, single cell RNA sequencing on the basal root ganglia, or on the dorsal root, dorsal root ganglia. On the dorsal root ganglia. Mm -hmm. And that gave us the understanding that it expresses f specifically for it, for itch. Actually, yeah, yeah. Actually, as I mentioned, it can help. It can tell us whether this neuron could indeed express the itch receptor or not. But the direct question is that 
whether this receptor expressed in this neuron is functional. So we need to do some other experiments to help us to demonstrate or characterize whether this neuron is indeed functional in the such, for example, the each transmission. And to achieve this, yeah, as I mentioned, we can do many different kinds of experiments. One is the calcium imaging. Mm -hmm. Because if the neuron is activated, the intracellular calcium will be increased either through the extracellular calcium influx or the release of the calcium from the intracellular part, the ER part. And uh, I mean, the calcium is released from ER to the cytoplasma. The intracellular increase of the calcium will activate this neuron. You know that the neurotransmitter release is dependent on the calcium increase. So the calcium imaging, I mean, this experiment will help us to test whether this neuron is indeed functional in this process. Mm -hmm. For example, I can buy the histamine, I mean the pure histamine compound, and then treat it the neurons. Mm -hmm. If this neuron is expressed a functional histamine receptor to meet the itch, mm -hmm. the application or the administration of histamine will activate this neuron. So this neuron, I mean the intracellular calcium will be increased. If we use the one calcium indicator to help us to distinguish whether the intracellular calcium in this neuron is increased, mm -hmm. we can distinguish this. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Intracellular calcium increase, mm -hmm. okay, means yeah. that it's expressing to... It's activity it's of this neuron. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's one in single cell RNA sequencing is another part of... Actually, it is uh, two distinguished parts. Two different ways to... One, the that. single cell RNA-seq, it's demonstrated the expression yes. of the receptor. Yes, yes. The calcium imaging or the electrophysiology is demonstrates that function of the receptor or this neuron. Okay. Both the expression Function. and the function. Yeah. I like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. The expression and the function gives you the knowledge that that's what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how about, let's talk about this um, from the explanation of uh, GPCR, mm -hmm. G protein coupled, coupled receptors. receptors. Yeah. Okay. So uh, apparently there's lots of them on the outside of every cell. Mm -hmm. Do we know about how many on the outside of every cell? Lots? Like mm, you know the numbers of GPCRs in our body? Yeah, on the, uh, yeah. On e but let's do try every cell. How many No, GPCR no, not no. every cell. Not every cell? Not every cell. How m which cells have GPCR and which ones don't? It depends. Okay. As I mentioned, if, if this receptor could mediate such as each pen, and these GPCRs may be exclusively expressed in the primary sensory neurons, the DRG, the dorsal rotor ganglia neurons. Mm -hmm. If this receptor could mediate the immune, this immune reaction, these GPCRs, these receptors may be expressed in the immune cells, such as the mast cell or macrophage. It depends. Okay, but all uh, neurons and glia cells have GPCR receptors? Mm. Mm. Or a lot do? Or Sorry, okay. How many of the brain cells have GPCR receptors? I think nearly all the neurons. Nearly all neurons. Nearly all neurons okay. could express GPCR, but but not all of the GPCRs. Okay, but okay. yeah, yeah, not yeah. all. In our body, mm -hmm. there are nearly eight hundred GPCRs. Yes. Okay. okay. There are some identified GPCRs. I mean, the function is known, and uh, some others are uh, often GPCRs. Means their endogenous ligand are unknown, so-called often GPCR. For your question, I think for nearly all of the neurons, the brain neurons could express several GPCR, for example, the glutamate receptor, mm. Mm -hmm. but not all of the GPCRs. Okay, mm. okay, okay. Okay, and then when we, when we look at the, the GPCR receptor, this is something that is uh, about 
40 or 50 percent of all FDA drugs are targeting mm -hmm. GPCR receptors. So this is yeah. a big field. Yeah. Uh, people care a lot about being able to target uh, molecular compounds to GPCR receptors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how do you know what GPR receptors are related to itch? Is that what we were talking about earlier with the the um, the dorsal root ganglia that that those cells have GPCR receptors for itch? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Is, so yeah, is that what we were talking about earlier with the? So your question yes. is, how do we characterize a receptor? Is a itch receptor? Yes. Okay. As I mentioned, firstly. From the exp in the expression level, it should express if this receptor is H receptor, it should express in the primary sensory neuron, yes. the dorsal root ganglion neuron. After that, we need to demonstrate their function or its function. Yes. Yeah, in the each pathway. Expression function. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And specifically the dorsal root ganglia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, so then you are always targeting dorsal root ganglia GPCR receptors. Yeah. That's your, okay. Okay. Because okay. that's always where itch is. Yeah. Going to be, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cholestatic disease. Okay, cholestasis. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, obstructing the flow of bile from the liver. Yeah. Okay, so bile from our liver is what tells us to itch? Okay, so, yeah. yes, okay. Yeah, you know that in the physiological condition, the bile will reach to the intestine from the liver, especially in the duodenum, which is a part of small intestine. And the bile, such as the bile acids, will help us to digest the food. Mm -hmm. But there is a condition of the disease called so-called cholesteritis, means there is some blockage so the bile cannot reach to the intestine, mm. but accumulate in the liver. Mm. Mm -hmm. And through the systemic circulation, this accumulated bile, for example, the bile acids, the bilirubin, are all compounds contained in the bile, will reach to our body tissues through the systemic circulation, such as the serum or skin. And it's a major symptom of the cholesterol patient, it's a itch, the severe itch. I mean the chronic itch over six weeks. Mm -hmm. And but uh, the mechanism is still unknown. But actually, two thousand years ago, a Greek physician found that, or hypothesized that, maybe some compounds contained in bile caused itch from a from his. Uh, clinical observation. So we hypothesized that maybe some compounds contained in bio it's the uh, each causing compound. Okay, and okay. then compounds in bile are itch causing. Okay, and compounds. Then are itch causing the, compounds. And if the bile builds up in the liver and doesn't if the flow is obstructed, mm -hmm. like in cholestasis, mm -hmm. then the uh, itch, it just goes, chronic itch happens mm -hmm. with the buildup of bile. Okay. So bile acids, uh, as I mentioned, if we accumulate in the liver through the systemic circulation, it will reach to other body tissues, including skin. And uh, we have posited that the elevated levels of bile acids maybe trigger the itch. But the question is that What's the receptor that emitted the, this itch? We don't know. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Buildup of bile acid in liver causes chronic itch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the f obstructed flow. So if bile was flowing, mm -hmm. then we wouldn't be itching. Okay. It's an interesting point. As for the, actually, there are several therapies for the cholesterol itch. One of them is a resin. It's actually is, is a iron resin, so-called cholesterol. It's a strong iron resin. I mean, it will absorb the bile acids to form the insoluble complex then secreted from our body tissue. And the patients after usage of this cholesterol, this itch, 
is relief. Mm -hmm. It's decreased, I mean the decreased. So we hypothesized that the decreased bile acids caused the decreased each symptom. So maybe the bile acids is the each causing compounds. Yes, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Oof, okay. So now we also uh, f figure out that there's a process with the bile acid that then also is uh, when it induces the, so the bile acid compound inducing itch, but then we also are trying to figure out how with chronic itch to block the GPCR receptors mm -hmm. so that in the uh, dorsal root ganglia mm -hmm. so that I don't chronic mm -hmm. itch. Yeah. So you want to make a molecular compound to block the GPCR receptor so that I don't itch. Exactly. To achieve this, we need to know the exact of the receptor that mediates this itch. So our lab are interested in this question and as I mentioned, this year's study have known that most of the each receptors are GPCR. So we focus on the GPCR, especially the often GPCRs expressed in the dorsal ganglia neurons. So these often GPCRs should be a candidates, maybe the candidates that mediate is each. So we analyze the sick data, I mean the sequencing data of the human dorsal root ganglia neuron. And we found several often GPCRs that are highly expressed in these DRG neurons, I mean in the human DRG neurons. So these often GPCRs, as I mentioned, should be the candidate that mediates this age. So when we found that this, when we found this, firstly, we used the bio extracts, the bio extracts to test whether the bio extract could activate this often GPCRs if the, this receptor or maybe one or several GPCRs could be activated by the bio extracts it should be a each receptor at least a candidate receptor and actually we performed this and we found that the bio extract could specifically activate one of the often GPCRs, very luckily, and we found that it is MRGPRX4 that is highly expressed in human DRG neurons. So the bio extract is complex. I mean, there are many different compounds, including bio acids, bilirubin, and some other compounds. So after that, we want to know the exact compound I mean the active component contained in the bio extracts that activate this MIGPX4, this receptor. So after the chemical separation, and such as the uh, mass spectral, you know that the mass spectral or NMR, mm. and we identified it is bio acid. It's the active component to activate this receptor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then you have to figure out, out of 2,000 molecular compounds, which one is going to do the blocking of the GPCR receptor? So you have to, you have to run 2,000 of these experiments to see? Actually, when we found that uh, MIGPX4 by combining other experiments, we have demonstrated that this receptor is a uh, each receptor that mediates the bio acid induced cholesterol each in human. So after that, we want to know or we hypothesized that if we could find a compound that specifically block this receptor, yes. yeah, it should be a drug candidate for this each symptom. Yes. And actually, we have did this. We screened nearly two, as you mentioned, nearly two thousand compounds and we have found some candidates. And we think we can find a compound that can block this receptor, but it's not enough, you know that. Mm. If we want to further develop this compound from bench to clinical, 
we need to demonstrate different properties of this compound, such as the potency, affinity, toxicology. Yeah. yeah. So if we found this compound, we need to collaborate with such as chemical groups to perform the chemical modulation or fine tune the structure of this candidate to, go to, uh, to get a, a potent one, especially specific. The specificity is very important because we, we don't want to get other side effect. And we found, if we found this uh, potent compound, I mean the antagonist of this receptor, it should be a best candidate okay. for this each. Okay, mm -hmm. so then it could be that the about 200,000 people in the USA per year, and I don't know how many worldwide, probably millions of people in the worldwide mm -hmm. um, that have uh, coleostatic disease can then potentially use a pharmacologic, pharmacological um, aid in order to prevent their chronic itch mm -hmm. from happening. Okay, so this is one of the um, health uh, outcomes of your scientific research? Yeah. Actually, there are no efficient therapy for this treatment. I mean, for this cholesterol itch. The traditional method used the cholesterol as I mentioned, but it will cause severe constipation. And because of its uh, taste, the severe taste, the patients found it unpalatable. And um, yeah, so. We think if we find a, a drug, especially a drug candidate, it should be very efficient for this itch symptom. In addition to uh, treating itch, where else could science like this mm -hmm. help us? Okay. In addition to itch, there are many different uh, sensory somato sensations, such as pain or temperature, or the mechanical, the pain is also a severe one. So if we find a pain, I mean, the specific receptors that mediate the pain, we can treat the pain symptom with the similar strategy. Like when I have a very severe surgery and I have a, a several weeks of severe pain mm -hmm. that we could block the GPCR receptor for pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The traditional method, is such as the morphine, morphine. Yeah. But it has severe side effect, yeah. such as the addiction. High addiction. High addiction, because there are many of morphine receptors expressed in our brain. But if we, if we cannot achieve the specificity, it will cause a severe side effect. For our each receptor, as I mentioned before, it is specifically expressed in the dorsal root ganglion neurons. If we find a candidate or antagonist of this receptor, supposedly it will not influence our CNS, the central nervous system, because it can specifically target to this receptor, but not other receptors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so targeting pain very specifically rather than in the whole numbing of the whole. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. It's important. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. And maybe even, yeah, temperature, maybe even the mechanical. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Now, what about um, where do you see your work here at the lab? Where do you see your work? going with you think then do you need a do you need to partner with a a pharmacological institution to help you develop the molecular compound for you to actually be able to go and deliver that to the GPCR receptors to block the itch mm -hmm. for the chronic itch patients exactly actually our work you know that in the lab to demonstrate a principle, I mean, we have found the molecular mechanism of cholesterol itch, for example. We have disease screened antagonist, and uh, we believe that many f pharmaceuticals also want to treat this itch because it has a big market. 
So it can also, so this compound, these companies can also target this each receptor to treat this each and may find the antagonist. Mm -hmm. Do you know what it would look like for a lab that found the molecular mechanism of itch, of a chronic itch, mm -hmm. to work with a pharmacological company? Like, what do you do? Do you say, here's our research paper? <laughs> Will you guys make the molecular compounds and then continue uh, helping us fund this project and we collaborate on it and then we own, we split the IP, the intellectual property. Do, how does it work if that happens? Actually, we can collaborate with some pharmaceuticals and we can also build up our own pharmaceutical. Yeah. Yeah, to develop the compound yeah. to the clinical trial. Yes, yes. Okay. I'm curious like what the yeah what the split in ownership is or what the funding is like do they help fund the lab if you guys have really good research that they want to use you know that's an interesting question the relationship between a pharmaceutical company and a lab that's doing yeah research yeah what would be a ideal neuroscience tool for you let's say 50 or 100 years down the line where we're doing everything that we want to do with the brain. What would that tool look like? Okay. Your question is, what is the most efficient tool in your size? Yeah, yeah and 50 or 100 years down the line. The even, future. For the f even for the future. Yeah, yeah. What would that look like? What would that tool look like? I think it may be called the optogenetics. Yeah. You know, the channel reduction. Yeah, if we can find, express a channel reduction, it actually is on channel in the neuron, we can just use a light to stimulate this neuron to or activate or inactivate this neuron's activity. Yeah, so if we want to treat some disease caused by the uh, sensory, I mean the neuroscience, system, the nervous system, we can express this uh, optogenetic related uh, ion channels in the brain and they use a light to activate or inactivate the neurons. So I think the optogenetic is very powerful. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Optogenetics mm -hmm. is a massive one. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. How about on a on a global collaboration <laughs> level? Mm -hmm. How can we increase people around the world working together? Oh, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Honesty is important for the collaboration. Yeah, and we need to share our data with each other, but not hiding them. Yeah, and besides that, uh, I think uh, the policy is important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the government. The policy is important for the uh, collaboration, especially from different countries. Yeah. 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 Honest data, uh, m more clear scientific communication and collaboration channels, mm -hmm. and then just the overall, I guess, governmental, but also company-wide collaboration across the world. How about as we go into this exponential technology era and the 21st century, what is a skill that young people should know so that they can be highly effective in the world? Okay. It's hard to say. Mm. I think, uh, firstly, the, the tool is important for the uh, uh, technology. I mean, the tool is important for one field to achieve the hard problem or the question. So um, maybe the tool development is important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I like that answer. Young people going into the new ages should be focused on tool development. I like that answer. Mm -hmm. Especially because then the tool 
can then have other people from around the world begin using the tool yeah. and then have more creativity, more science. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. What about, you know, we find ourselves being born onto this planet orbiting the star. There's, you know, 8 billion of us here, 100 billion potentially lived and died before us to build the world. What is the purpose of the human experience? What's the meaning of life? Okay. You mean the purpose of the human being? Yeah. Okay, it's very interesting. Uh, to survive. And um, mm, I think uh, uh, for the better survival, the better life is important for the human beings. Okay. Yeah. yeah. A constant process of bettering the human experience. Yeah. What do you think about consciousness? What is consciousness? Oh, it's very complex. Yeah, it's very, very complex. I think it depends not only the nervous system. It may be in close different system. The nervous system, immune system, the behavior, and uh, the psychologist. Uh, to my knowledge, I don't think uh, it's a clear study to demonstrate what is the consciousness. Yeah. Do you think we have free will? Sorry? Do you think we have free will? Free will. Oh, OK. Maybe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we still don't know the mechanism. Okay, it's hard to say. Yeah. Mm. yeah. The what consciousness is very complex. Yeah. Mm. What do you think is the role of love in life? Sorry. What do you think is the role of love in life? Oh. Uh, it can. The love will encourage yourself to pursue you what you want, to pursue your life, okay? And uh, for me, as I mentioned, uh, it can help to uh, release, yeah, especially when I was in a, a depressed uh, chemotherapy or uh, upset condition. The love can help us to stand up and move on and move on. Yeah. 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 Love can give us something every day when we wake up to look forward to achieving every day. Yeah. yeah. Falling in love with what you do and and given that our computational capacity has been increasing so fast and our ability to make simulations of biological systems mm -hmm. and all these types of things. Do you feel like our life is a simulation? Yeah, I think it's a simulation. Mm. So complex, okay. Uh, it depends on the uh, correlation. I mean, it depends on the correlation between different systems. Yeah. Hmm. What do you think is the most beautiful thing in the world? <laughs> Lao. Yeah, I it think Lao is the most beautiful thing in the world. And they can achieve why? everything. Why? Yeah, why? why is because it as I mentioned, uh, it's the source of power. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I love this. Gene, this has been such a fun conversation. Thank you very much for joining us okay, on the show. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's been such a pleasure learning about the sensory GPCR of itch. We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below, everyone. Let us know what you're thinking. 
and have more conversations with your friends, families, coworkers, people online about sensory GPCR, about itch, about fixing chronic itch, about the development of the newest sort of molecular compounds that can help solve some of these ma major diseases or issues with our bodies. More conversations about neuroscience. Also support yulonglilab.org, the link's in the bio below. Support the artists, the entrepreneurs, the leaders, the organizations around the world that you believe in support us simulation. You can find our links below and support us there. And also go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams in the world. Jongcha Kwaila, happy mid-autumn festival. And also go and build the future, manifest your dreams into the world. Thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. And we will see you soon. Peace.